Smartphone cameras are assuming the role of point-and-shoot cameras these days, so camera companies have to do something pretty impressive to get noticed. The Canon PowerShot G1X Mark II is definitely getting noticed. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. The Canon PowerShot G1X Mark II is more than you might expect from a point-and-shoot category camera. It has a host of controls and capabilities that enthusiasts and pros will love, and ease of use in automated modes for beginners. But for a point-and-shoot to really stand out these days, you have to deliver great quality images, and the G1X Mark II does just that. The built-in lens is very nice quality with a good zoom range. And the 12.8 megapixel CMOS sensor is a 1.5 inch sensor, making it physically much bigger than those of camera phones and even bigger than the Nikon 1 mirrorless series sensors. I really like this built in lens. It's a 5x optical zoom that's a 35 millimeter equivalent to having a 24 to 120 millimeter lens. And the maximum aperture runs from f2 to f3.9, depending on how much you zoom. So toward the wider end of the zoom range, with a wide aperture, you can take advantage of that nine-blade diaphragm and the large sensor size to capture artistic images with soft bokeh, images that you don't normally associate with a point-and-shoot, and certainly something smartphone cameras just can't touch. And the fact that there's optical image stabilization means that your zoomed images won't suffer from motion blur. And since point-and-shoot cameras should be convenient, it's great that you don't need to worry about your lens cap. The G1X Mark II captures high-quality files like 14-bit RAW photos and 1080p30 HD video. Of course, it captures JPEG files and lower-resolution video, if you like. Another reason you'll be capturing better quality images is the low-light sensitivity. The ISO range goes from 100 to 12,800, and the image noise reduction for JPEGs processed in camera is quite good as well. If you consider that lots of people thinking about this camera will be smartphone shooters who are frustrated with the limitations of their phone cameras, then features like Wi-Fi and near-field communication make sense. These shooters usually want better quality images or more control over their photography experience or a great zoom lens but they still want to share their images via the web and social media as quickly as possible. The Wi-Fi feature set is strongly focused on image sharing with smartphones or other cameras, and it also enables wireless printing. Of course, I like the fact that you can use Wi-Fi to make your smartphone into a remote shutter release. I enjoyed shooting with the PowerShot G1X Mark II, and great images were the reward. But I have some observations about some of the features that you won't pick up by reading a spec sheet. For example, I really like the pop-up flash for two reasons. First, it's the bendy kind that you can flex for bouncing light off the ceiling. And second, because it doesn't automatically pop up and fire, even in automatic mode. You might get a warning on your screen that suggests that you use the flash, but you still need to slide this switch to deploy it. I ended up with a little love-hate relationship with the 1.04 million pixel LCD screen. The fact that it's big, bright, and a touch screen are all good. The fact that it tilts down 45 degrees and up 180 degrees, so you can even see it from the front for taking self-portraits on a timer, is also great. There's kind of a double hinge action at the top that I found a little clumsy. Also, daylight sunshine shooting is never a great experience with an LCD. You could add the optional EVF DC1 electronic viewfinder, but I just attached my trusty Hoodman hood loop and outdoor shooting was great again. And if you're wondering, doesn't that hood loop block the touchscreen capabilities? The answer is yes, but Canon has done this touchscreen right because everything that you might touch to adjust on the screen is still accessible with buttons and dials on the camera body. You don't have to use the touch screen. There are also a couple of dials on the lens that are for manually controlling various things like aperture or even snap zoom on the inner ring. 
It has noticeable detents, so it feels good, and I love using it for manual aperture control. Then, the dial at the front of the lens can be used for manual focus if you just press the MF button first. Again, this was a nice experience because you just press a button rather than making a trip to the menus to turn off autofocus. And then as soon as you start to focus, your preview zooms in to help you see the focus much better, along with providing a bar for focus distance help. Then pressing the shutter halfway takes you back to the actual view and you can take your shot. The controls give you quick access to most settings and the startup time and first shot time were surprisingly quick as well. The autofocus time was quick in both bright and low light, but I found the low light focus accuracy to be just a little weak. The burst rate is nice at up to 5.2 frames a second, but that's going to be with JPEG images with a fixed focus. Burst with autofocus will slow the burst rate, then when I shot RAW plus JPEG and autofocus was turned on, I dropped to around one shot per second. No matter what camera you're using, JPEG is almost always better for fast burst rate capture. The PowerShot G1X Mark II is Canon's answer to the features, performance, and image quality that'll keep the point-and-shoot category alive and well in the age of smartphones. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.